This is my ITX build, or at least what's left of it. Built this a couple of months ago. It's been running fantastic. I put it in the bedroom, able to game on the bedroom on the fly, um, especially when the living room is being tied up by friends, family, just, yeah, whatever reasons. And that's where I normally keep my main computer, but when I just want to game and just uh, decompress a little bit, go to the bedroom, pop this in, it's been running fantastic. It was a Ryzen 5 3600, a Gigabyte A520 motherboard, and then just recently I had gotten an upgrade for a 3080 Founders Edition. I know, bottleneck, we're working on that. So although I've had a great ITX experience, um, it tends to get a little loud, the heat's a little much, and I think we need to make it better. So the other day I set on a quest to find a better ITX cooler. Um, I tested the G-Lid one, the ID cooling that came with it, and then I found the big, uh, the Scythe Big Shuriken 3. Put those coolers head to head and found out that the Scythe Shuriken 3 actually ran fantastic. The fans were quieter, lower temperatures, and that's definitely the cooler I wanted to go with. But I guess in the midst of all that testing, something happened to the motherboard. I tested, probably did about a bunch of Furmark, AIDA64, and Heaven Benchmark, just kind of stress testing everything. I guess it was a little too much for that little motherboard, and it just stopped working. Went through all three coolers, got the test results, and then when I went to kind of load everything up, blank screen, troubleshooted with different CPU, power supply, memory, everything that I know could be, reset the BIOS. Yeah, didn't want to come back to life. So that motherboard's now been shipped off to the Gigabyte RMA process. Will I ever get it back? Who knows, but I guess we'll wait and see. So until then, or not until then, since that motherboard's getting RMA back, I'm gonna, once I get it back, if I get it back, I'm gonna keep it as a spare, but I ordered an Asus Strict i570, X570. That's gonna be perfect for this. It's a better motherboard, beefier. We're gonna be upgrading the CPU to a Ryzen 7 5700, courtesy of Silver Knights PC. Thank you guys for that. Definitely check out their YouTube and their store. We'll post links below. So now the Fractal No case has been fantastic, but I just found one thing that, I find it to be a weak point. So right over here in the front, this is the front panel, it's just sealed off. And I'm finding with the 3080 Founders Edition, especially where the fans are, that thing ramps up. This area over here gets ridiculously hot. And in my room while gaming, I got the fan at 100% and we're sitting in temperatures of the mid to upper 80s. It's quite ridiculous. So I think we can make it better. So this is the Fractal Node 202 case. Pretty decent case, I will say. Some flaws, some things I don't like about it, but I like the size, the portability, easy to build in, about the size of a console, maybe a PlayStation 4, definitely not a PlayStation 5, that joker's pretty big. But all in all, pretty decent case, and you got a lot of options for different graphics cards. I ran a 2070 Strix in here, and right now I'm running a 3080 Founders Edition. But one thing I'm finding with this case, especially more so for this Founders Edition, is that the GPU sits over here, the case goes on top just like so, and all this is blocked. And the way the fan orientation works for the Founders Edition, definitely not ideal. So in another video, I actually purchased these. I kind of like these. They're fantastic. They work really good at what they're designed to do. And what they're designed to do is add more airflow. Now, yes, you could put fans on this and get that going, but it's going to be close up against here. So I don't think we'll be able to squeeze any fans. And yes, I know the fractal node, you could put fans on the bottom, which I might entertain that later on. Let's see how good this works. But what I'm thinking is cutting the hole, putting this over here, the graphic card sits underneath, and now we have more airflow. On the Dell Optiplex 3050 video I had, I popped in a 3060 Ti. That graphics card, along with the i7-6700, was actually running pretty hot. And doing this and opening it up, even though there was no active cooling, this airflow right over here allowed the computer to cool about 10 degrees cooler. Worked fantastic. So that's what we're going to do. Now, thanks to my beautiful wife, I don't know if you can see it right over here, but she's already traced everything out because she has a steady hand and I totally stink at doing this junk. Well, tracing and drawing that is. But she went ahead and cut everything out. So I know right over here, this whole area is what I need to cut out. I have the holes, which in which I'll screw that out. So I'll cut it out this way and then I'll be able to mount this on like so. Now, another modification I had to do on this case is Right over here, if you look, since we're adding the ID cooling or even the Scythe Big Shuriken 3, this whole plastic piece over here had to take it about off on this side, and that actually allows the fan to, uh, to clear. So if you don't take this off, you're not gonna be able to use those bigger coolers. So that's my advice for that. Make sure you get that done if you're gonna be upgrading to those coolers. And finally, to jazz it up, I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually do some spray painting action. I got this matte black 
blue or matte blue ink whatever it is it's inside warming up because it's actually a little cold in the garage and i think i'm going to spray paint this front area over right, right over here just kind of put a tape line right over here and maybe put a little tape line right over here and spray paint this grill so i have black i'll have that blue have this whole area blue and then leave this black and just kind of get a little accent going not sure how it's going to look i think it looks good in my head from what i'm seeing but we'll see maybe i'll paint the grills to do some accent on that blue so i would say blue black a lot of blue leave that black and maybe do this in blue right over here and i think that should work We'll try it. If it doesn't work, then a lot more sanding. So first things first, let's get the Dremel tool out. And let's get to cutting. Now this top layer over here is plastic. So we got to kind of cut through that first and then we can cut through the metal. success all right so we got rough edges which I'll probably knock these down get a file smooth out the edges and make this thing less tetanus deadly so we can definitely do that so we're looking pretty good so far I mean this is tedious and the good thing about those grills is that they cover off all my evils so it is what it is so let's get to cleaning that out more and then we'll move on. All right, not too bad, looks pretty even. And the good thing about that piece is that it hides all the nasty imperfections, but I think I'm getting better at it. A file to file all this down. Uh, don't use a 3 16 bit. That's what I had news used initially. Like this one is a little loose. I actually used the one smaller than it. I forget what the number is. And then I just kind of rounded it out until I was able to screw it in. So it has good threads. It holds it pretty decent. And I think that'll be fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape off this lip right over here. Cover all this. Keep the whole Fractal logo. And then paint this, that blue that I was talking about earlier. I think it'll look pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and just paint all this blue i'm not sure if i'm going to paint this blue and black or black and blue i'm not sure yet i might just paint this blue leave this black and leave this black as well or maybe i'll just paint leave this black paint this blue and paint this blue kind of back and forth on it so this is one of those evolving builds we'll see how i feel but let's get to doing that then I'll scuff this up the way I usually scuff it up is with a scotch pad just to kind of rough it up loosen up some of the shininess of it open up the pores and that'll work use a good paint with primer if you really wanted to go fancy and do this like 100% right then you can use an adhesion promoter and that will actually allow it to bond better and prevent it from um, flaking or getting all jacked up and then when I'm done I'll put a clear coat on it to seal it and it should look good so let me finish taping this mess up and we'll see how it comes out.
is why you prep it. Make sure it's clean after you dull it and scuff it up. All right, three coats, 20 minute dry time in between. So now to seal it and protect a lot better, I always use the clear coat using the whole flat thing so I can kind of keep the same color I want. If you go with the gloss or anything like that, it's gonna kind of change the look of it. So we'll give it two coats of clear, wait, and then we should be pretty much done. All right, two coats later, it's still a little tacky, so what I always suggest doing is taking off the tape while it's wet, and that way it doesn't peel off. I've had that happen, so let's get this out. All right, several hours later, put it back together, and it is done. And I got to say, I kind of, well, not kind of, I do like the way it looks. Clean, more airflow, like the contrast. I wish the blue on the grate popped a little more. Maybe I could have went with a different color for that, but it matches and it kind of checks the boxes, you know? I got to say, I like the way this came out. Looks really good. I like having the blue. I didn't want to go with anything lighter or pop as sometimes I do do that, but considering that it's going in the bedroom and I just wanted to kind of color match with how everything looks in there, this works really good. It'll blend, you really won't see it. So I'm very happy with it. So we are done for now. I'm gonna end this video right over here, make this part one as in part two, we should get be getting my new motherboard in, upgrade the CPU, pop in our graphics cards, get everything running right. I'm actually gonna update the uh, M.2 on it. And I should be able to achieve the goal that I'm going with, decent gaming rig, better temperatures, better airflow, and most important all, a quieter fan. And I know some people may suggest, yes, the Fractal Ridge came out and the Fractal Ridge actually addressed some of these issues over here. I've heard a lot of good things about the Fractal Ridge, but I don't really feel like spending another $120 on a case. Plus, this was only 20 bucks, the paint I have lying around. So maybe in the future, we'll look into a fractal ridge and maybe just build this out and flip this at another time. But for now, I'm going to be happy with it. And who knows, I'll probably keep it long term. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticism, improvements, suggestions, things that you think that I may have missed or I can do to kind of make this better. Definitely like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as part two is coming out. We're going to put this together, maybe put a little RGB action to kind of get some more FPSs. Who knows? We'll see. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next. Hopefully fix this and finish it in part two.